Before dying at the tragic young age of 26 of kidney failure, actress Jean Harlow rose to superstardom thanks to her performances in classic films like Hell's Angels and Hold Your Man. An aspect of her life that's rarely talked about is her short-lived marriage to MGM executive Paul Byrne, which ended with his death two months after the ceremony, though it was ruled a suicide thanks to a note found on the scene by a fellow MGM executive called in before the police Many speculate this note was actually forged to cover up a murder. Join Facts First as we explore the truth about Jean Harlow's murdered husband. Although actress Jean Harlow only lived to be 26, she found more success in her lifetime than most. The beloved actress from Hollywood's Golden Age became a movie star in her early 20s, after her breakout role in 1930s hit film Hell's Angels. She had blonde hair and a curvy body, making her a precursor to Marilyn Monroe. While Jean was at the beginning stages of her superstardom, she found herself caught in a struggle between her good looks and her desire to be taken seriously as a dramatic actress. MGM executive Paul Byrne positioned himself as a mentor for the fledgling star and promised he would help her get roles that could demonstrate her true talents. Paul legitimately believed that Jean had more to offer than just her looks, and he also happened to have fallen in love with her. Paul convinced Jean to sign to MGM, and the two got married a short time later. It said you should never mix business and pleasure, which is an adage that the short-lived marriage of Jean Harlow and Paul Byrne arguably supports. Only two months after they got married, Paul was found dead from a gunshot wound to the head. The death was ruled a suicide, and it remains officially classified as one to this day. But many have their doubts about whether or not Paul actually killed himself, believing he may have been killed. His dead body was found naked on the floor of his bathroom by his butler. Trained in the art of Hollywood protocol, the butler knew he needed to call Paul's fellow executives at MGM before calling the police. Studio head Louis B. Mayer rushed over to the scene, and it was him who presented the suicide note that solved the case to the authorities. Of course, many have theorized that Louis forged the note, and there are multiple reasons he may have done so. The note that was presented to authorities by Louis Mayer upon their arrival consisted of a vague and poorly worded apology to the absent Jean Harlow. Jean would later claim she had no idea what the apology was supposed to mean, and that's essentially all the actress ever spoke upon the matter of Paul's death before her own death years later. The reason Louis Mayer had been called to the scene by Paul's butler instead of the police was so that the studio head could perform damage control. He needed to make sure that nothing found at the scene would cause damage to either MGM or Gene Harlow's reputation. The studio head was not found to have tampered with any evidence, but it's doubtful the authorities thought much about it. They took the scene at face value and took Louis at his word, declaring the death of Paul Byrne a suicide and moving on. Although authorities have maintained his death was a suicide, many have maintained their doubts. The presence of Louis B. Mayer at the scene before the arrival of the police means we will likely never know the truth about how it looked before authorities arrived. Jean Harlow had not been present, so she was not considered a suspect. She had been spending the night at her mother's house on the night of her husband's death. The prevailing theory at the time as to why Paul Byrne had killed himself was that he was embarrassed by his impotence when it came to his relations with his new wife. Paul allegedly couldn't please Jean in bed, and he was so embarrassed by that fact he would wail up and down the halls of his mansion about it. He subsequently took his own life because of the shame, though the decidedly esoteric suicide note doesn't exactly substantiate this theory. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. Of the people that think MGM executive Paul Byrne was murdered, there are few that think Jean Harlow was the culprit. Instead, most point to a third party. This third party is a woman named Dorothy Millette, who Paul was actually married to by common law at the same time he was married to Jean. Paul died being married to both Jean and Dorothy, and there's evidence Dorothy could have been at Paul's place of residence on the night of his death. According to Paul's cook, she saw a woman on the property the night of Paul's death that she couldn't identify. There were subsequently two glasses found by the poolside, along with a swimsuit that couldn't be identified as belonging to Jean. When you add in the fact that Jean was verifiably at her mother's, it seems obvious there was someone visiting Paul that night that no one has identified. Many believe this was, in fact, Dorothy Millette. As it turns out, Dorothy was even visiting California at the time on Paul's dime, and she took a ferry out to sea and committed suicide by jumping into the ocean after the announcement of his death. 
Paul and Dorothy had met while the two were aspiring actors living in Canada. By the early 20s, Dorothy had to be committed to a sanitarium due to failing health. Given that Dorothy was his common-law wife, Paul paid her expenses up until the time of his death. Many question whether Dorothy's suicide after learning of Paul's death was out of desperation for losing her husband, guilt for committing the crime of his murder, or fear of what would happen without someone to pay her way. It's uncertain why Paul had planned for Dorothy to visit him, though their communications seemed to paint a portrait of two people who were still honestly in love with each other. It remains even more uncertain then why Paul had become married to Jean Harlow. Although Paul and Jean had claimed they were getting along well during their two months of marriage, the stories of impotence don't back this up. Furthermore, a gardener on their property claimed the two never quite got along during the time they were together. Although the death of Paul Byrne was announced as suicide, authorities did make an attempt to track down Dorothy Millett before her own subsequent suicide. She was their only lead as far as foul play, and the chance of learning what happened to Paul Byrne arguably died alongside her. Many wonder why Louis B. Mayer would have covered up the crime of Paul's murder if Jean Harlow had not been the one to commit the crime. It remains uncertain what exactly Louis saw when he arrived at the scene, or what he knew about the strange love triangle Paul was involved in. Mayer's goal had simply been to make things look as uncomplicated and innocent as possible, and a vague suicide note due to impotence certainly seemed a lot less complicated than a possible homicide as a result of a love triangle. This stands as more than enough justification for the forgery to many. Although the surviving executives at MGM were afraid the death of Paul Byrne was going to affect their beloved star's career, Jean Harlow went on to more success than ever. She never spoke on the matter of her late second husband's death or his alleged impotence. In 1933, she starred in her biggest hit yet, performing alongside Clark Gable in the film Hold Your Man. The film was a box office success, despite the controversy that had resulted from the possible murder in Jean's personal life, as well as a scene in the film that featured the actress bathing. Despite the fact that Jean only lived to be 26, Paul Byrne was only one of three husbands that was married to her over the course of her life. Her first husband had been a man named Charles McGrew. She married him in 1927, and they divorced in 31. Jean married Paul a year later, and they were only married for two months before Paul's supposed suicide. Finally, Jean married a man named Harold Rawson in 1933, and they divorced a year before her 1937 death. She died of kidney failure at age 26. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think there was foul play involved in the death of Jean Harlow's husband? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.